right, stat students. So um, this lesson is one of the last ones for this unit. We're, we're getting close. We have one more that we're going to go through, uh, which will be pretty long. The next video is probably going to be pretty long. This one's going to be pretty short. Uh, but the main thing that I need you to do for this um, is I need you to download some data. Uh, I sent two more files via email uh, to you, so make sure that you check that out. And uh, if you have any questions about getting those on your calculator, make sure you ask me. But it sounds like most of you have been successful at putting those on there, so I'm really happy about that, that my evil plan is working with the distance learning and everything's going the way I need it to. So not an evil plan, I'm just kidding. But uh, it feels cool that everybody's able to get the data. So we're going to be using some data today that um, is very meaningful to, uh, to you guys. So you need to open up um, on your calculator. You should have the test scores 2020 that's the that's the file that I need you to get open for me okay and we have this here so the first column you can see the name right here this is test one raw data for 2020 we just took our first test a, like a week or two ago and uh, we have all the scores this is everybody this is distance learners face to face and if you scroll through this you'll see that there's 39 people that took this test okay then we have our face-to-face -face learners. Face-to-face, -face, this is raw scores. These are not curved or manipulated in any way that they might be in the grade book. Uh, so this is the raw score. First attempt, this is what face-to-face -face learners got. DL means distance learners. So distance learners are in this column. So in comparison, let's see, we have 18 distance learners and we have um, 20. That math does not add up. I must have missed somebody. Whatever. Um, I just now noticed that and we've been using this in class. It's okay. Uh, but we have those here. And then this right here is last year's. Okay. So one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing these two distributions together. Okay. I want to see, did y'all do better than last year's? And we're going to talk about that. So <clears throat> uh, let's see, they had 60... How many of them? There was a lot more last year. 63 um, students last year. Okay, so quite a bit more than I have this year. Uh, but what we want to do, and we've already done this before, I need to make dot plots of this data. So let's go ahead in our calculators. You've already done this in another video. I want to make one dot plot over another, comparing this year's to last year's. And I want to see if there's any significance. So we're going to do uh, add a page data and statistics. And I'm going to go quick through these. If you need to pause it, do that, whatever you need. But uh, because you have a bit, that ability, I'm just going to sort of fly through this. Click the variable we want this year's. Okay. Then we're going to press document because we want to get the other one up here, right? So document, page layout. Last time we did custom split, but this is actually a little bit faster. If you do second, the second one here, you can actually pick the layout you want. We want top and bottom splits. So we're gonna do layout three, and there we go. So we have this uh, this year, or last year's data. Actually, I wanted this year's. So make sure that that's 2020, sorry. So 2020 is on top here. Go down, you have to press, you have to click down here, and then you have to press actually menu. So let me, I click down here, I press menu, and you want data and statistics. Let's put the 2019 data down here. If you look at this, you'll notice that they look the same, but what's the problem? The scaling, okay? We wanna make sure we have the right scale to do a proper comparison. We need to go from zero to 100, right? That makes sense for a test since those are the only scores you can get. So let's do menu, window zoom, window settings. Here's our X min and X max. We want zero and 100. So it's gonna change that one a little bit. Check it out. Then we're gonna go here. Uh, we have to click up top, do the same thing, menu, window zoom, window settings, zero to 100. Again, I'm going fast. So if you need to slow down, stop and rewind it, do that, okay? Um, all right, so let's look at this comparison. And what I'd like you to do is uh, we are going to do what we've been doing, which is we're gonna be doing, so we want 2020 and tw uh, 2019, and we're gonna do socks. Okay, and we're going to go through this pretty quick. Uh, I want you to be thinking about what the shape outliers spread. I got to move this over a little bit. There we go. Uh, 
definitely adjust this just a little bit because I'm not able to see it too well. There we go, okay. So you should be thinking, what are the shape, outlier, center, and spread? So let's look here. Uh, the shape of our distribution to me looks, I'm gonna put R for roughly symmetric. What about last year's data? As you can see, this is slightly skewed which way? Well, that would be to the left. The left side is longer, so skewed left. I'm, I'm abbreviating. Uh, well, I'll, I'll write skewed, skewed left. It's longer on that left side. What about outliers? Uh, since this is symmetric and there's nothing really falling far away, all these points are pretty close. Our highest was 94. So you may think, oh, that might be an outlier, but it really does fall into the pattern. So we'd say none here. What about here? Well. See how these are stacked up? We had three people that scored 28s, and that's unfortunate. Uh, three people scored 28s. And since they sort of do fall in this pattern, like you could argue that it's an outlier. If it was just one person, I might say, okay, yeah, it's an outlier. But since there's three of them, um, we, we might just get, get away with saying, you know, none, question mark. We're not really sure. Again, this is very subjective. If you really felt strongly that they were, you just need to argue it and say, uh, it's such a low value compared to, you know, da 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 da. And, and, you know, you can argue your way into it. Center, where's the center for this? Well, if you look, what is that balancing point? So I got this uh, blue line here. Uh, we would say probably about here, this point 67. Is essentially, that's pretty close. How about here? Where's that balancing point? So for me, I would say between 61 and 67, somewhere in here is that balancing point, maybe a little bit lower, maybe 62. And then what about the spread? Well, the spread, it goes from 94 to 44. Okay, 94 to 44, so that's about 50 for, for this year's. What about last year, 28 to 87? So that is, da 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 da. <laughs> I always hate it when the numbers aren't like even or want, this one is, it, when the one that's higher I, is not above it. It's always a little bit more challenging to do that. It's a shame. Uh, actually, shamefully enough, I'm just going to make sure that I get it right instead of sit here using all this time. So let's just, uh, let's just do that. Okay, 59. All right. So what does all of this tell us? And this is what we've been studying up to this point, but we're going to get into something new today. We're going to describe these with numbers. Um, but this is telling me symmetric. Most of the values were pretty close together and it meant there was an obvious pattern. They're all balanced around that center point, sort of what that means, the left and the right look approximately the same. Skewed left means more scores that of that data set were higher than they were lower. There's just a few people that scored lower, okay? Now, what about the center? Well, center, 67. Uh, that's so that middle point. And you can notice that it's higher than the center of last year. And then shape, or excuse me, spread. The data was less spread out for 2020, more spread out for 2019. Now, what does that mean? That So spread is like your variability. There was a lot more uh, high, high scores or low scores for 2019. That means I probably had students that had more variability in here. Now, we are including in both of these AP students and just the honor stat students. So, you know, you can't say that, oh, you must have AP in here compared to here. Uh, also, our highest score on this test didn't come from an AP student this year. So, you know, there, there's also that. This 94 was not an AP student, okay? Uh, so, you know, there's just more variability, variability of ability in stats, I think, in this group here, or just overall work ethic or focus. I'm not really sure what it was. Uh, also, face to uh, distance learners are in here, so maybe that has something to do. So it's always interesting to like sit and just think, what is causing this to happen? That's what I do as a teacher. So who did better? Well, how do we determine that? We're kind of looking at comparison between the centers to tell us that, right? The centers of these these distributions. Since the overall center is positioned higher, we would be inclined to say that 2020 did better we have our term for that, that's called statistical significance. Is this effect, so comparing where I've written in red there, comparing those effects, is it so large that it's unlikely to have happened by chance? It seems like it, 
we don't have a way to actually answer that just yet. Again, this is, I hate that for you guys. This is so like subjective, but you know, in your mind right now, you can make up your own decision. In my mind, it does seem significant because we have such a large sample size. Okay. So, um, this is how we've been describing it. Now, the rest of this chapter, we're going to be introducing new ways to do all of these. Okay. So I'm gonna increase my slide here. I want you to draw a line in your notes. All right, so we've we compared those two distributions, but now we're interested in creating what's called the summary statistics. So what we're about to do is not something that you're gonna understand all the parts to it, but it's just a process for, for finding the numerical values of data, okay? So we're, not, we're gonna be talking in the next lesson about each part that we're about to create here, but this is the step process, and this process is something you're gonna use so many times this year, okay? So many times, all right? So you've probably been wondering, this is stats class, and where is the word mean? We've never really used the word mean, but today that's gonna change. We are gonna be talking about mean and average and uh, other statistical symbols are gonna pop up. And uh, so it might be confusing at first, but by the end of this, you're gonna know all these symbols really well. I promise you that. So creating the summary statistics, here are the calculator steps. Here we go, number one. So you need to have your calculator handy because we're gonna do this. So calculator steps, number one, enter your data into a list and spreadsheet. Okay, so on a test, you would have to do this. Um, Luckily, go back to your, oh, if you have your calculator handy, if we go back here, we've already got that. It's all perfect. And the reason I want this is so that it's consistent and that everybody has the same data, okay? So now, let's go ahead and do the next step. Uh, we're going to um, go to a cell in an empty column. All right, so in your calculators, you should be able to move this little highlighter around. We're going to go to an empty cell. So these are all cells here. They're all taken, though, so we don't want to use these. We're going to go to a new column. Ah, E, right? It, there's nothing in it. There's the cell in the first row, so we want the first cell. Good. Next. We want to calculate the summary statistics, and this process is going to be something you're going to use all year long. So you press menu. And again, I've got most of these memorized, so that's how many times we use it. Statistics. Stat calculations. One variable statistics. That's it. So let's do this. We're going to go menu, statistics, stat calculations, one variable statistics, and you should have this on your screen. Now, every time you go to this screen, you're just going to hit enter. All right, and it takes you to this, which looks super complicated. There's a lot of cells, but this one's actually very easy because there's only one thing we need to worry about. So that's four. Change, and I spelled change wrong. Change the X1 list to the appropriate variable. So this list here, x1 is the one that we want. So I haven't told you what we want yet. 
so let's go ahead and calculate summary statistics for Uh, we want 2020 test one. Okay, then we want 2019 test one. So we're gonna do both, and we're we're gonna be able to compare these in the next lesson. That's what we'll be looking at. Uh, but let's go ahead. We're gonna change this list here. All you have to do is hit to the right. I'll show this on the mouse pad. To the right, you if you just keep hitting that, it'll go up and down. You have your drop down list. We want 2020 raw data. That's what we want. So hit enter, hit enter, and then whoa, look at all this information that they gave us right here. Some of this we're going to use, some of this we're not going to use. Okay, some of it will be talked about later, uh, but we're going to write down the essential parts that we need. Okay. So first off, and I'm going to be transitioning through my displays here. First off, we want this. This is called X bar, which we'll define a little bit more later. This is the mean. Here it is. And it's that's how you're going to calculate mean. Remember how you calculate mean? Normally, you would take all the values uh, in the column. So if I go to my other display here, normally you'd take all the values. you'd take all these values in column one and you would add them up and divide by what would be 39. But we're lucky that we have a calculator that won't make any mistakes. Uh, it will always produce the correct answer for us. So that's gonna be equal to, and let's go, if you're looking at X bar in your calculator, we're gonna write 68.2308. We don't wanna, I don't wanna round anything right now, but that's found right here in this first column. Okay, we don't care about this one, not that one, not that one. We actually care about this one. So we want S sub X. This is a new term called standard deviation. This is probably one of the most important concepts in the entire class, like without a doubt, uh, one of the most important. So for that, look at your calculator. I'm just gonna start writing these on here, 12.19. All right, we move along. Let's go to another cell. Okay, the next most important one is in. That's 39. That is sample size. I think we've talked about that before, had a lesson ever. If not, there we go, we got it. Next, we're gonna go ahead and write these. I'm just gonna go ahead and start writing these. These should be self-explanatory, except for Q1 and Q3 that we're about to write in here. Median, Q3, and maximum all right so let's just go ahead and write these out the minimum was 44 that is the smallest test score for the 2020 group q1 we have to define that a little bit more that'll be in the next lesson median is 67 that's actually what we put for our center isn't it go back up yeah 2020 center over there in the green the left on the green side or green on the left side over there 67 interesting okay uh, q3 78 and then the maximum high score was 94. that's how you create the summary statistics you're going to do this so many times this year but we're just going to practice this process over in uh, 2019 go ahead and uh, do that calculation uh, i'm going to give you i'm going to pause this after i write all these up and you're going to try to go ahead and do this without me first. But med, med, median, Q3, and maximum. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pause this. I want you to try to calculate these, emu, uh, simulate, or excuse me, emulate the steps that we just did, and you have those written down. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so you had a chance to do that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my statistics so it's me and this is how quick this gets menu four one one okay change this to the 2019 data this is what we want last year's test hit okay now we're going to go through our list here so the mean let's go ahead and start writing these down 
Uh, so over here, we have the mean is 63.2063. Standard deviation, 15.57. Uh, in sample size, I gotta go down, hold on. down in is 63 so 63 minimum 28 uh, q1 is 50 67 78 87 we're done that's the summary statistics so what's gonna happen is and, and this is where the video is gonna end but what will happen on a test is I'll give you a set of data and I'll say find the mean and standard deviation how do you do it? Here it is, right? Find me the uh, the median. Find the median for the data. You have this method here that you can use. This, we obviously, um, like other stats teachers and, and the ones that I've had in the past, would make students do this by hand, but I just think that it's more important that you guys understand that technology can do this for you. And what's more important, and, and so when, when I say, hey, computer's doing the work for you, you need to focus on what do these numbers actually mean. Now, I know right now you don't know, so that's fine. But I just wanted to show you the process for creating the statistics that we need for data. These are the important statistics for this class and for anytime you're describing data with numbers. Here they are. We're gonna say how to describe them in the next lesson, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and stop there. If you have any questions, let me know.